What do you do when you finished a Raspberry Pi project and you want to protect it from power cycling? Setting up your system to read only may be the solution for you. Today, we're going to set up a Raspberry Pi to run read only, making it revert to your preferred configuration after every reboot. This is going to be a perfect solution for creating permanent digital signage and video loopers, information kiosks, multiple user work terminals, and for educators managing a classroom full of Raspberry Pi boards. There are going to be some concessions. Once you have turned your Raspberry Pi into read only, no changes, be it writing new code, changing files, deleting directories, are going to be remembered after a reboot. For instance, if you create a new directory on a read only Raspberry Pi, when it restarts, that directory will have disappeared. However, data can be pulled from a read-only Raspberry Pi via a USB or in any other normal way. So with your Raspberry Pi set up just like this and all your settings and data exactly how you want, let's effectively take a permanent snapshot of this moment. And whenever the system gets rebooted, it's gonna revert back to this snapshot. And we're gonna be able to do this by turning the Raspberry Pi to read-only. But first, for real, back up that micro SD card. With Raspberry Pi OS displaying like normal, open up a new terminal using the black button at the top left of the screen. From here on out, it's gonna be the exact same process if you're accessing the Raspberry Pi headlessly or directly. Link down below all about headlessly accessing Raspberry Pis if you need. In this new terminal, type and enter the following, sudo raspy-config. This line starts with sudo, which means it's gonna run the following with admin privileges. As soon as you press enter on this, it's gonna open up the configuration menu of the Raspberry Pi. For today, we're gonna to navigate down to performance options and press enter. This is gonna take us a layer deeper into the menu. In this page, we're gonna navigate down to the overlay file system. This is where you're gonna be able to enable or disable the read only file system. And here you can see, it's gonna ask you, would you like the overlay file system to be enabled? And here we're gonna say yes. Having done this, you're gonna see two things happen, one after each other. First, it's gonna bounce back to the black terminal for around 30 seconds to update the normal root files. After it's done this, the terminal will display the message, the overlay file system is enabled. After pressing enter on that screen, it's gonna show you a new message, asking you if you would like the boot partition to be write protected. Here, you're gonna make sure to say yes, as this boot partition, which is the micro SD card, is gonna be write protected. If the disk is write protected, then it is read only, and that is exactly what we want to have happen. Thus, having pressed enter on yes and rebooting the system, your Raspberry Pi is now completely in read only mode. I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what this means. I'm gonna create a new folder on the desktop, called in this example, new folder. Right now, the micro SD card is in read only, but I can still create folders and files, no problem. I can even put these newly created files onto my USB stick and take them away with me. Just because it's read only doesn't mean you can't alter and create new files. They're just not gonna be saved upon a reboot. Crontab, which is a method of getting software to run on boot, and time synchronization, which is pulling the time information from the internet, are also gonna work perfectly with a read only Raspberry Pi. I am also gonna delete this file here, which I created before making this system read only. So let's power cycle the system directly and let's see what happens. Oh, scandalous, felt naughty. Knowing that the setup is read only, we would expect after a reboot that the new folder is gonna disappear and that the deleted file is gonna come back. And once the setup reboots, we can see that this is exactly what has happened. Kiosk applications and digital signage are often not properly shut down, but instead simply unplugged at the end of the day. The same goes for video looping machines. Repeating this in the mid to long run is what eventually causes your SD card to corrupt. Another scenario where you'd want to read only Pi is when you have a fully completed project and you want it to be both reliable and power cycled via say an external timer. And to those who say my project doesn't even write any data, it is true that your application or program does not write any data, but your operating system, the Raspberry Pi OS, or the GUI, such as Chromium, or the Firefox browser, certainly is. Constantly during operation, they'll be writing temporary files, log files, cache files, all kinds. 
there's a lot going on in these remarkable devices. You can reverse this process nicely and easily, but it's going to require two reboots. Simply, you can go through the same process to revert your Raspberry Pi from read only back to the default read and write. The overlay file setting acts as a toggle, so once navigating back to this setting using the Raspberry Pi configuration menu like before, you can simply toggle right on and off. Remember though, it's going to take a reboot to disable the overlay file system, and then another reboot for the boot partition to become enabled. Each reboot gives the setting a chance to stick, so make sure not to do any important work until your system is read and write, lest your data is lost. Worth noting, another method to turn the Raspberry Pi OS to read and write is simply done by doing a hard reset and reflashing that micro SD card. Now, hopefully this well-hidden setting will come in use for you, either by providing your project that finishing touch of security or making your life with Raspberry Pis even easier. So with that, until next time, stay cozy.